Next, we would like to invite our third speaker, who will be talking about the age of new technologies, safeguarding and transmitting intangible cultural heritage, Marilena Alivizatu, the honorary lecturer at the University College of London. Let me uh, briefly introduce our speaker to you. Recently, uh, she has published a book called ICHM Participation, where she has argued that for ICH, that cultural heritage theories and policies and concepts and functions that they have served as a framework. She has had a long time interest in this field. She's also been instrumental as a head researcher of I Treasures, which is funded by EU, one of the largest funded projects of its kind by the EU. Please give the researcher a big round of applause. Good morning from London. It is a pleasure to be here with you and thank you very much for inviting me uh, in this year's forum. Thank you also to the technical team for the excellent support. I, today I would like to share some thoughts and experiences of digital and tangible heritage as an experimental interdisciplinary field of community-based research and action. Discussions about intangible heritage are often characterized by what could be described as anxiety of safeguarding in order to avert its loss. Indeed, heritage scholars De Silvia and Harrison have noted that the perception of risk and endangerment is fundamental in the production of heritage value and a motivating factor in heritage practice. Safeguarding anxiety has also been discussed by Professor Hafstein who has argued that intangible heritage appears forever to be on the verge of destruction. Often cited threats include social and biophysical factors, such as globalization, social transformation, climate change, and more recently, the COVID-19 pandemic. Safeguarding anxiety and the actions of governments and institutions to recognize cultural traditions as intangible heritage have been further examined by critical heritage researchers, highlighting nationalistic and market-oriented neoliberal entanglements. The compilation uh, of inventories and lists of intangible heritage through different documentation programs could be regarded as a manifestation of safeguarding anxiety. Yet any process of recording and documentation creates a static representation, a moment that captures and freezes in time people and social and cultural practices. It also situates those knowledges and practices firmly in the past. While I'm a supporter of cultural documentation, especially when carried out in inclusive and participatory ways, I believe that the process of defining knowledges and practices as intangible heritage should not be driven by anxiety to preserve the past, but by engaging with the present and looking towards the future. In my earlier work, I examined intangible heritage in relation to the politics of erasure, arguing that impermanence, change and transformation are important heritage values. These ideas can be traced to a philosophical tradition going back to ancient Greek philosopher Heraclitus, who famously said, Pandari, then many, everything flows, but also in Buddhist philosophy and the Japanese concept of new jo, meaning impermanence, transience, and mutability, or the condition of existence, which is continually subject to change. Applying such a theoretical framework of impermanence to intangible heritage would suggest a life cycle approach. According to this viewpoint, like everything living, living heritage too, follows a course of birth, growth, change, decline, death or rebirth, and reincarnation. Rather than stasis, intangible heritage is in flux, always becoming. It is within this framework of becoming that I will be looking at intangible heritage and not as static endangered knowledges and practices. Indeed, the forum's subject of convergence and creativity invites us to rethink intangible heritage from the prism of change and transformation rather than the prism of safeguarding anxiety. 
The rest of the talk will look at how different new and digital technologies can create new types of engagements and find new purposes for intangible heritage by supporting artistic and scientific experimentation and community action. Firstly, I will discuss the iTreasures project, which was funded, which was an EU-funded collaborative research partnership between 13 European universities, research institutes, and small technology startups that took place between 2013 and 2017. The aim of the project was to create an open and extendable online platform, including a virtual learning environment aimed at facilitating learning on a cognitive but also embodied level about different types of intangible heritage expressions, most notably in the field of traditional and contemporary dance, singing and craft. At the heart of the project was a double technological challenge. On the one hand, the use of new technology tools and sensors in order to capture various aspects of intangible heritage expressions, such as body movement and vocal production. On the other hand, the semantic analysis of this data so that they are then made available in a multimodal way through the platform. The platform consisted of separate but interconnected technological functionalities, which were the product of the research specialization of partner institutions. Among others, the digital repository, which was a database of recordings, the learning management system courses, which were online courses containing contextual and theoretical information about intangible heritage expressions, and which were co-created by project partners and practitioners. The pedagogical planner, which was a, a, an educational tool for educators supporting learning design and covering different learning situations and target populations. And, fi and finally, the 3D sensory motor learning games, which were interactive virtual learning games. From the outset of the project and as part of the funding call, the research team was required to incorporate the use, the use of technological sensors, which were able to capture specific aspects of human activity. This meant that only some types of cultural expressions could be examined in the fields of dance, traditional crafts and singing practices. A key challenge for the entire project was how to make the platform accessible to a wide range of users. In order to facilitate public engagement, access to the platform became open and efforts were made to create strong relations with heritage practitioners, educators and researchers through a series of public events, lectures, training workshops and demonstrations in the different local research settings and virtually. Cases included schools, university departments, local associations, museums and so on. However, decisions as to what exactly should be recorded and transmitted through the available sensors put in place a selection process whereby cultural practices became the subject of intensive, high-tech data collection and documentation. Often this happened through the use of invasive tools like the custom-made hyper helmet uh, to document the movement of the larynx during polyphonic performances or body sensors for the recording of movement. Data collected through this process were used to create 3D sensory motor learning games. The games were primarily but not exclusively addressed to a younger generation, which is typically thought to be tech savvy and familiar with virtual gaming. While carrying out the project, the consortium debated at length concerns about gamification, including the trivialization, commercialization and decontextualization of cultural knowledges and practices. Yet, project evaluation with groups of teachers and pupils revealed positive attitudes towards the games as resources supporting learning and allowing tech-savvy youth to engage creatively with intangible heritage. Moreover, feedback from heritage practitioners revealed a sense of pride that local traditional practices became the subject of scientific and technological research funded by the European Union. It is now four years since the end of the project, and my skepticism about decontextualization has subsided. 
What I have come to value out of this digital platform was the co-creation of a scientific experiment, bringing together an international interdisciplinary group of researchers, small technology startups, cultural practitioners, local and virtual communities of school teachers and students of primary, secondary and higher education to engage creatively and repurpose intangible heritage with respect and inquisitiveness. After all, the project is now finished and all the dances and singing traditions that were the subject of the learning resources continue their own life cycles, regardless of our experiments. A second project I would like to discuss is Art Pluriverse, a community science series on intangible heritage, art and open knowledge, and it's aimed to inspire people to experience tradition anew. Although I was not directly involved, I would like to discuss it as an example of creative repurposing of intangible heritage in contemporary art practice. The project was conceptualized by academic researchers at the University of Ioannina in Greece and was inspired by intellectual discussions around the pluriverse, a world where many worlds fit. Based on principles of creative commons like open access and deep respect for communities of cultural practitioners, the project brought together in an online open forum at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, groups of contemporary artists, researchers, and local textile communities and the public to enable knowledge exchange, cross-fertilization of ideas and creativity. The artist community synergies led to the co-creation of new artworks, often with powerful social messages. For example, uh, the partnership between digital artists Kostandinos Karametis and the Rosario School of Traditional Weaving in Zahori, Northern Greece, which led to the co-creation of new textile pieces that combine traditional techniques and patterns with new media and digital tools. Um, excuse me, six uh, of these online um, collaborations lasted, which lasted about a month, such as artist diaries and the documentation of the creative process are available on the project platform. This is the next project and the final project that I would like to discuss is Palestine Open Maps. This is still work in progress, carried out by a cross-disciplinary group of technology researchers civil society groups and journalists. I think this project is especially relevant to our discussion today because it further demonstrates the possibilities of new technologies to serve community action and memory work. At the center of the project is an online platform that combines new technologies for mapping and storytelling in order to bring to life absent and hidden geographies and stories from Palestine. The project involved the digitization of map sheets drawn by the British Palestine Exploration Fund in the 1940s. These were seamlessly joined up and can be examined together with more recent maps of the area after the conflict. The aim is to further combine these maps with other data sources, such as oral histories from the Palestinian Oral History Archive, village statistics and historic photography. The project team has further organized community events called Mapathons with different Palestinian groups around the world in libraries and universities, but also in refugee camps in order to retrieve information from these maps and reconnect new generations with a homeland that they have never been to. During an online workshop, one of the research partners, Majd al Shihabi, spoke about how this model of combining mapping technologies with oral histories and oral history methods can be used in different geopolitical contexts in order to empower marginalized groups. So to summarize, these three projects underline different ways in which new technologies can reanimate and give new meaning to knowledges and practices from the past and the present. Against this backdrop, perhaps now is the time to overcome safeguarding anxiety and repurpose intangible heritage in the era of convergence and creativity, inviting scientific and artistic experimentation, ethically informed collaboration and activism. It is not surprising that all three projects discussed are open access and free to reuse, 
something that invites us to re-examine debates about cultural ownership and the creative commons. Goma Psunida, thank you.